You know, in home VO work, we spend all of our time trying to get gigs, trying to find people that want to pay us for our services. But there are times when it's not only the smart thing, but the right thing to say no to a gig. And by the end of this video, you'll know how to make that decision. I can't say no. Kids, don't be afraid to say no. Attention! How you doing, everybody? Andrew Scott, and you are back at boot camp. Now, as I said in the opener to this video, when you're in home VO, you spend the vast majority of your time trying to find paying work or work that'll help you further your career. So it might seem a little anathema that I'm going to be talking today about when to say no to work but it's actually a really important skill for you to develop as far as you and your VO business. Now, in one of my most recent videos that you'll see up here, I talked about scams and how to avoid getting involved in a scam. And this is kind of tangentially related to this. You know, so on a lot of VO websites and gig worker sites, you spend the vast majority of your time reading posts, doing auditions, sending them off with all the other dog and pony show details like demos and, you know, requested auditions and things like that. And when you're starting out, you tend to do that a lot. I mean, that's what like 95% of your time is, is reading posts, doing auditions and sending things off. And when you're starting out, a lot of times you don't hear back from the vast majority of organizations or people that you try to contact. That's the game. That's what we do. We're professionals at being rejected, right? Ah, refreshing beverage. No product placement, but, you know, hey, give me a call if you want to work out a sponsorship. Invariably, after all that rejection, I think not just VO people, but human people in general, tend to start feeling a little bit desperate. You put in so much time and energy and passion into this thing that you're excited about and that you want to do and that you want to pursue. And... Yep, the crickets are back. So it's fair to say that desperation tends to make people make some bad decisions or at least drop their guard further than it should be. And when that happens, you might wind up considering or entertaining things that you probably shouldn't. So what are these things? What, what am I talking about? Well, it's easy. We're talking about projects that would use your voice in a way that you're probably not okay with. And if you are okay with it, well, you shouldn't be. And to this day, I still get solicited for a lot of these kinds of things. I have a bunch of search spiders that send me emails when keywords are triggered on sites and things like that so that I can scout for work, which is probably another video I should do in the future about that, but we'll get to that later. But it doesn't take a whole lot of time to start sussing out that this project is, well, it's a scam in its own right. But it's not a scam of you, it's a scam of somebody else. And they want to use your voice. I'm not okay with that. Well, all right, let's run down the list. Okay, one of the biggies is something that I'll call a phone reenactment. Now this often gets presented to you, the VO talent, as follows. A company gets a hold of you and says, we're a company that does reference checks for employment or, you know, other things like that. And we do this all exclusively on the phone. And we're running a training program right now to get our credentials checkers, you know, make sure they're doing the job right, et cetera, et cetera, that they're presenting themselves 
honestly and all this business. But we need people to act as employers to play against our credentials checkers in order to, you know, ensure quality control and blah, 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 blah. Mm. Now, nah. what they're actually doing is they're having you act like an employer for another client of theirs who needs a credentials check that they can't get. Maybe they've been fired. Maybe they've been written up or maybe they've been, you know, convicted of something. But in order to get another job or a loan or this, that, or the other thing, they need a positive credentials check from somebody or an agency. And this company is trying to get your voice and you to act like that agency. And the person who calls at random is actually a real person, a real authority trying to do a legitimate check. And they're going to use you to fake that check. Nope, right there, out, out you go. So the next big one is what I refer to as playing a gag on a friend. So a company or maybe just an individual on a pay-to-play site or on a gig worker site or just even on a web forum on the internet says, I'll pay somebody $50 if they'll help me play this gag on my friend or something. And quite often what it is is they want you to pretend to either be law enforcement or an investigator or something like that. And, oh, I just want to scare my friend. I just want to spoof them into thinking that their car is going to be impounded or whatever. In truth, what they're wanting to do is use you and your voice to harass, intimidate, and scare somebody. Um, Number one, faking being an officer of the law is illegal. And you can get in some significant trouble with that. Number two, it's just really slimy and unethical. And number three, Sadly, more often than not, these kinds of calls are used to threaten people in domestic violence situations or in other situations where they're being intimidated by somebody. And there might even be something like a no contact order or a restraining order involved. And they're trying to use your voice to get around that by being able to say, well, it wasn't me. Eh, it's still not okay. That's something that you don't want to be a part of. So the next up on the list is the one that I call my boss or my doctor is out of the country. So this is a typically done on an individual basis. Somebody on a web board says, hey, I'm in a jam. My doctor or my boss is out of the country. I I need this reference. I'm going to lose my house or I'm going to, I don't know, lose my dog or something. Or, you know, my kid's going to be painted green if I don't wind up having this call go through. They would do it, but they're not available. They're in, you know, somewhere a Stan, and I don't know when they'll be back. And I'll pay you $200 if you just be kind and help me out. This is typically a spoof of reference or credentials. Quite often, this is done to spoof medical references or things like doctor's excuses for uh, work absences or even something as serious and significant as qualifying for disability benefits. You don't want to be any part of that. That At that point, you're knocking on the Fed's door, and you really don't want your voice used for that. So this next one is actually kind of a hybrid scam. And this one's one I call credit check training calls. So the setup is this. A company... I've been doing that a lot in this video. This is a lot of this. A company says that they're looking for candidates to call up and help them train their credit check agents. Now, that sounds fine. And I've actually done work like that in the past myself, where I portray a consumer and I go through the process and they run it through their QC things and make sure that everybody's doing their job right. And that's fine and legitimate. But this one starts to go south pretty quickly. And what happens is they say that their agent will call you. You answer the phone. Phone, by the way. And we'll get to more of that later. But they say, 
We're going to have our agent call you. You answer the call and go through the process. They'll direct you. Um, but one thing that we do need from you is we need you to give them some actual information about you so that they can run what they refer to as a soft check. There it is again. A soft check because they need to be trained on that process as well. And we won't do anything with your information, we promise. We're a legitimate company and we would never do anything like that. And we'll pay you $500 for your call. Well, number one, $500 is a pretty decent chunk of money. Um, and number two, what are you doing giving any of your financial information away to a complete and utter stranger you're talking to on the internet? Nah, no. This should just be so many red flags that all you see is red. Don't ever do anything like that. Ever. And so the last one is pretty simple, really. Don't do anything that requires you to audition using just your phone. You know, and this will be somebody or some company saying, well, we just need you to sound like a real person, but we need it on a real phone because it needs to sound like a real call for whatever reason. Why are they hiring professional voice actors who have typically hundreds, if not thousands of dollars of equipment and asking them to just use their phones? That's just weird. And quite often, what it winds up being in reality is a combination phishing scheme and number harvesting scheme. Sometimes it'll go so far as for them to even say, well, you need to download this app in order to do it because this is part of our quality control training, blah, blah, blah. No, actually, what that is is a piece of malware that you've installed on your phone in order to let them take control of you. Um, this is a growing problem and one where we can just head it off at the pass by saying, if you're looking to be a legitimate voice actor, your phone should never come into play unless you're just answering audition emails. No legitimate company is going to ask you to record on your phone. Not for an app, not for a phone-based game. No, just no, no. So now that we've got a bunch of these things laid out here, how do you avoid those things? Well, first off, don't be such a gullible bunny. Do research on companies. Do research on people that are offering to hire you. Ask for websites. Ask for LinkedIn profiles. Ask for business ID numbers. Legitimate companies have all those at the ready. And if anybody balks at any of those, you probably don't want to be doing business with them. Another really quick way to do a check is just go to your favorite search engine and type in that business name or that contact email address plus the term plus scam and see what pops up. Unfortunately, it's probably not going to be anything that's going to inspire confidence in you. Again, I want to reiterate, I understand what it feels like to be kind of desperate for work. Not that you're desperate and almost out on the street, but I mean, really, really wanting to do some work, wanting to put your name on something, wanting to be able to say, I did that. But are you so desperate for work that you're willing to take your guard that far down and get whammied? Not only whammied, but are you so desperate for work that you're willing to kind of take your personal ethics and throw them aside in order to do something for money that might actually wind up harming somebody financially or worse? If you are, do me a favor and get the hell out of my line of work. Here's one final thing to consider. If you are, for whatever reason, willing to do work for these kinds of people, knowing that there's a chance that these things might be used for less than noble purposes. Are you also willing to be dragged into this or down with that company when they get busted? Because when scams like this get busted, they tend to investigate everybody involved, including the voice that they used. Is all your laundry clean? Are all your skeletons nicely tucked away? It's really not going to be fun when somebody shows up at your door demanding access to your computer and, oh, yeah, we're going to go through your entire email history as well. Yeah, 
that kind of stuff happens. And sure, you can try the good old 80s plausible deniability and say, well, I didn't know what they were going to do with my voice. Uh, yeah, but you know what? You might be able to say that, but it's a lot harder to prove that. And it takes time and money. Just don't fall for these things. Again, if you ever have a question about the legitimacy of a job, either email me directly or go down here to our Discord server, join us. So many of the people in the Bootcamp Discord have gone through stuff like this themselves, and we've all really sharpened our eyes with the ability to kind of suss out what's bogus and what's not. And plus, we just enjoy having you there with us. But until next time, this is Andrew Scott, and you've been at Booth Camp. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye. You're dismissed.